folks. I'd just like to welcome you all here this morning to this presentation of the 2020 Plunkett Award. And we have the recipient here sitting behind me. And it's what a good news story this is. We thought we'd have got this done on Christmas week, but we sort of have to blame the minister at this point in time for it being called off. I don't know what sort of misbehaving he was at, but he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, as we are ourselves many a time. But you're all very welcome, and I would like to introduce you to a few of the dignitaries here. And I'll start off by welcoming the Minister for Agriculture, a uh, next door neighbour of Roberts. It's not often that the Minister gets the opportunity to make a presentation to a constituency member and uh, been an any showing man himself and Robert an any showing man and uh, it's great that he's fit to be here to make that presentation. So with nothing further to say, I asked uh, TJ Flanagan to say a few words about the Plunkett Award throughout the years. So TJ, over to you. So thank you folks. Thanks Charlie, I'll take off the mask. I feel a bit strange not wearing the mask at this stage. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to come to Carndona, the home of this great co-op. Um, five months later than initially planned uh, to formally mark the awarding of the 32nd Plunkett Award for Cooperative Endeavour. Uh, with this award we take the opportunity to celebrate the wonderful movement, the men and women who had the vision and courage to take to the byroads of rural Ireland to spread a simple but revolutionary message. If we work together and pool our resources, however meagre they may be, we can achieve great things. We gather together to announce the name of an individual who, in the, in the opinion of a panel of independent experts, has made a truly outstanding contribution on a local and a national level, working selflessly to improve the lives of ordinary people. Whilst the cooperative movement in Ireland has been for the past 127 years associated by the general public with the, the dairy sector, um, there are a very large number of cooperatives servicing the needs of general farming and the rural economy. Inishon Co-op is one of those, a successor to a separate Inishon Livestock Mart Co-op, which was established in 58. Uh, it was then registered in 63 as Inishon Farmers Cooperative Society Limited. Since then, it has grown by merger and organically to encompass the entire peninsula and has spread its influence and operations throughout the entire county and beyond. The current co-op is a tribute to the people of Inishon and the surrounding areas. Its contribution to the local agricultural and general economy is substantial. And like other co-ops, it harnesses the potential of the people of the area and focuses it, focuses it to deliver quality services efficiently. The co-op, however, wouldn't have existed without the grit, determination and vision of a few local people who saw the difficult economic circumstances that existed at the time and saw that they could do better. History books tell us that those people who spread the word about, the word about cooperatives and worked to establish them didn't necessarily have an easy time. Innate conservatism and inertia opposition from existing businesses and perhaps the fear of failure served to make life difficult for those brave men and women, but they persisted and thankfully some were successful. In the case of Inish Owen, we can look back to the leadership of a man who throughout his life has shown courage, determination and wisdom to set up the Mark Co-op in 58 and the Farmers Co-op in 63. Not only that, throughout the succeeding <coughs> decades he continued to serve in various leadership roles as a director, as a chairman, or in current terminology, as, a, as an influencer, maybe not on Twitter, uh, and as a wise counsel to those who subsequently took over the mantle of leadership. He showed extraordinary leadership at farm level as well, embracing science and husbandry and modern techniques to demonstrate to his peers that the farms of the region could be efficient, efficient productive, and, and maybe even profitable. That man is Robert Carey. I spoke to Robert in December, uh, when we had originally planned to present the award and he was extremely proud for himself and for his society. He was right to be. Uh, he was recommended for the award by the Inish Owen Co-op Society. Uh, his citation along with numerous others from all over the country was rigorously vetted by a panel of independent judges and in their view he was an outstanding candidate representing the absolute best of volunteerism, leadership, vision, commitment to community and to the cooperative movement. 
looking back at those tough times in the 50s, 60s and 70s from the, the current day of technology and opportunity, we can imagine that we're very different. But we're not really. Rural Ireland is still disadvantaged. This region does continue to lag behind the, the Google economy in, in Dublin. Um, and when we get over COVID, we will have a huge task facing us as a nation, as, a, as an economy, as a society. To rebuild our tourism and hospitality sectors, we need to create opportunities for our youth. We need to create a vibrant local economy built on the pillars of agriculture, tourism and industry. The leadership, self-sacrifice self -sacrifice and vision of Robert and his colleagues over the past half century and more should be an example to all of us in that endeavour. Working together, the spirit of cooperation will allow this region and the nation to recover and to thrive. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, um, Charlie. And okay. yeah, th thanks very much, Charlie. And it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you all today uh, to make the presentation of the uh, Plunkett Award to Robert and in um, and, and recognition of what he has done, like so many others, but particularly his contribution uh, over his lifetime to what we see here today. And I want to, to, to recognize yourself, Chairman uh, Charlie, for uh, your, your current stewardship of the co-op with Gareth Whitmore, the, the co-op manager, and uh, welcome um, TJ Flanagan and Ray Doyle of ICOS here today to, to, to join with us. And uh, I want to particularly, as you did yourself, recognize Robert's family, uh, who it's a proud day for as well, um, Michael and Martin and uh, uh, Sheila, excuse me, Sheila, and I know Elizabeth and, and Mary aren't able to be, to be with us today, but it's lovely to see all of you here um, and a recognition because I no doubt uh, all those evenings that he'd have been going out to meetings and whatnot, um, it's a whole of family effort and uh, I know it's, uh, that the, the, the value of that work is one that needs to be recognised by the family as well and, and, and always is when somebody is making that contribution, so it's lovely that you're here today uh, with them for that as well. I also want to, to welcome all the, the, the staff here um, that's outside, indeed the staff that's inside, and many of you who, um, uh, who have been on the board and previous chairman and committee members, um, and also to recognise those who, along with Robert, would have uh, made such a contribution to uh, building this up in, in terms of the, uh, at the old railway station starting off, as Charlie outlined, and at the, at the, uh, the, the old co-op site, which we, we all grew up with, and indeed at this fantastic new building, which is a testament to what the co-op has, has grown into uh, as one of the three, the three outlets for any shown co-op. Um, it's uh, particularly uh, proud myself as well as Minister to be here to be able to make, to, to, to make this award uh, a national award to Robert in, in our home area. Um, I, since I was a, of a very young age, uh, I would have come to the co-op here with my father. So it's, it's a great it's a pleasure and an honour to be here today as Minister to make this, this award um, to, to Robert. I think, as, as TJ outlined, the, the, the Plunkett Award uh, you know, is is a reflection and uh, a testament uh, to the, the the spirit of the co-op movement and the people who drove it. It's the principle which has made our agriculture uh, sector so successful as well, right across the country. And it's a principle which has really been of great benefit to farmers and the rural community here of any shown through the any shown co-op movement uh, over over our lifetime and uh, the 65 or so years since since it was established. I know, Robert, your, your, your two colleagues, um, uh, Joe McCauley and uh, uh, John O'Neill, um, can't be with you here today, um, but very much uh, send their good wishes, um, and you al along with them and many others at that time, you know, played that, that instrumental role in relation to setting the ball rolling, taking those small, small steps that gathered momentum and that gathered uh, size and scale as it went on. And of course, I remember growing up, uh, Donald Noon as well, who would have uh, who come up past the front the front window of my house, homes more or homes uh, uh, every morning uh, early, and again every every night um, on the way home, seeing him come back, uh, working here with so many others and, and uh, with yourself and all on the board and the committee to build this and to grow this and of course at all times serving in the community, helping it to grow, helping people to make the most of, of their farming enterprise um, and at the best value and the best return and the best possible income that was available and prices that, was, that, that, could, be, that could be achieved for the community in which it served. So I pay immense tribute to you, Robert. I, I've known you and seen you since 
I, 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 knew, I knew who you were before I knew who you were, because anywhere where I went as a young boy, I would see you there at the centre of things, whether it be the, uh, uh, being present at the Mart, at the Co-op, or indeed in the local community. So it's my pleasure, Robert, as Minister, uh, a tremendous honour to be, to be here to present it to you. And I congratulate you and I congratulate your family for a life well lived, for work that has shown tremendous results and for a spirit that has been to the tremendous benefit of your local community and to the co-op movement which you've helped to drive forward through that spirit and determination and hard work you've always demonstrated. So thank you, Robert, and uh, very, very well done. And I now make the award and the presentation to Robert. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me thank the Chairman and uh, TJ Flanagan and uh, the Minister, our local TD, Charlie Kim Charlie McConnell, for such kind words. The Minister, ICUS personnel, Chairman, invited guests. Most of us all get um, unexpected surprises from time to time, but I certainly got an unexpected surprise in the early days of um, December of 2020, when T.J. Flanagan, Chief Executive of the ICOS, uh, rang and uh, told me that uh, I had been awarded the Horace Plunkett Award for 2020. Back uh, 23 years ago, we gathered testimonies for the nomination of the main founder member of the National Cooperative, Donald Noon. Um, as I say, this award is a national award you have people from all over Ireland that are very deserving of it. And for that reason, it was a surprise, indeed, when in 1998, Donald was awarded the Horace Plunkett Award. Donald loved a life completely taken over by the initial co-op and the ideals and the uh, ethos of a good cooperative. And he wanted the initial co-op to be of a similar nature. The cooperative started from very humble beginnings. They started life on a old railway shed, a huge railway shed with a clay floor. Some of the slits missing and the ones broken, but that's where the cooperative start. Now today, they're one of the bigger employers on the peninsula, giving employment to the young boys and girls, sons and daughters of the cooperative uh, shareholders from bygone days. It's great to see that because these people will make their life in any show, settle in any show, rear their families in any show. It's much better than to see them go overseas looking for employment. We appreciate the presence of these year's representatives, T.J. Flanagan, the Chief Executive, Ray Doyle, the Livestock Environmental Policy Director. And the Co-op has always had a very close relationship with the ICUS in Dublin and indeed many times got sound advice and direction from the ICOS. The name that most of us all are familiar with and is shown of ICF, ICOS personnel as Seamus O'Donoghue. Seamus was a staff member for many years, retired now, but uh, we were familiar here at meetings and at AGMs as well. I want to thank the local management for nominating me, or the management of the cooperative for nominating me. And I want to include in that as well the past uh, general manager, Donald Breen, who seemed to have had an input to the nomination process of the award. I want to thank Gareth Whitmore, our present general manager, for the amount of time and work that he's done to organise in this presentation. With the pandemic, it has been a difficult uh, time for everybody, but I want to thank him for all his work. And finally, I want to thank my wife, Mary, and the family for all their support and looking after the livestock and other animals over the years when I helped the smooth running of the livestock sales and the newly established livestock market premises. Thank you very much. Here it is. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, I'll be very brief. I, I, uh, I'm going to 
most definitely can't follow what Robert has achieved. And I don't know if the rest of you are struck like I am, but I'm struck by Robert's speech. There's not one mention of himself. There's mention of the three others. There's mention of the co-ops. There's mention of the farmers. The man never ever mentioned himself. And that's it. What a, what a perfect example of what the Plunkett Award is about. A person who gives selflessly for their, their community and their farms, farms around them. Uh, I, Charlie asked me just to say briefly on the mart, because the, the marts is the area maybe in which I, I focus a, a good bit of my time on in ICOS. But again, what Robert and the three people he referred to achieved in 1958-59, if you try to put it in today's context, it, it, it was a very difficult thing to do. There was only three marts started in Ireland in 1955, and they were dead primarily down the south of the country, Kenny, Bandon and Waterford. But to start a mart here in Donegal and here in Inishowen, in the late 50s, it cannot be underestimated the actual work, dedication, and, and just simple perseverance because there were so many uh, areas that wanted to undermine the marts, the fledgling marts when they started. And again, that carried on. They started the mart, they started the four co ops, as Robert says. Everything was livestock created. They created uh, Inish Lee, lamb, and, and, and exported them successfully out of Donegal, continuing to this day to down to the south. Everything was livestock related. And again, I'll, I'll finish off with this. I want to congratulate Robert for what he's achieved um, because this award is for him today. And I know the co-op, uh, Robert will want, it always centred on the co-op and the man is right. But this man has, has achieved so much for the co-op and I think the co-op needs to be eternally grateful for that. Yeah.